Okay, we left off over here. There's a machlok of Yochanan Shlokesh and Zion regarding the Tzipor Mitzvah. When did they assume the forbidden status? It's, is it when you purchase them, or is it when you do the shechita? Rishlokesh said when you purchase the Tzipor Mitzvah, similar to the Egla Rufa, when, when you take it down to the valley to be decapitated, to have its neck broken. And Rabbi Yochanan says no. It's when you do the chita. So he asked him, Rabbi Yochan, Eisri, shochta v'nitzis treifo. We just left off in the middle of this. person slaughters the bird, and it's found to be v'nitzis. It's found to be defective internally. As I said yesterday, the Rashi explained because it, it was found to be. If it, its leg was severed, so it's obvious it's treifo. It's not nimtzis. Right, Nimtzis means it was only subsequently was found to be a trefer. Yikach zukshniyo, you take a second bird, you take a zug, a, a mate, a pair, a mate for the second one. Varishonu muteres bano, and the first one that was found to be a trefer is per, you're permitted to benefit from. So Rav Yochas asks Rav Shlok, "Do you solve the daito chasura? If you're saying that it becomes forbidden from the time of the purchase?" If you say the shechita is what causes the transition from permitted to forbidden, so the shechita is not a valid shechita, correct? Because it's a trefa. It's a trefa. But if you tell me that it's from the time that you purchased the bird, so therefore it already it assumed the forbidden status. So why should trefa make the difference? Okay, Moshe, you want to ask a question again? Yes, yes. You asked yes, the question to Gemara. Oma lei. That initially they found a defect in its intestines, so therefore it was it was actually a mistaken purchase, because you purchased a bird to be used for Sipora Mitzora, since the bird never qualified to be used in this particular ritual, so therefore it's not a valid purchase. It's a, only if it's valid purchase then it's considered then we have the transition from permitted to Forbidden. So therefore, that's the reason why it's permitted. No, it's still Kaddush. Well, still Kaddusha, it still doesn't make a difference. You could, you could be potent. So over here, Rashi says, what does it mean? They found the defect in its intestines. Since at the time of the purchase, it wasn't qualified to be used. Okay? Why, why a carbon, the, uh, it, it can't, a tray for inval invalidates it to be a carbon? Why by the birds? The, why it's, it's not kadosh. There's no kadusha. So why should it be disqualified, invalidated if it's a tray for? Because it says you should take the living birds. Siporim hachayos. The living birds. Chayos means full life. Fully alive. Right? We say trepe in a A bird that, that has any one of these defects will not live more than a year. So it's not, it's full life is not within the bird. So the bird, you, you, you need a tzipor chayo. Chayos. It's not tzipor chayo. So it's like you, a person would purchase a species that's not a, that has no relevance to the tzipor Is it, a, does the, would, the, would the purchase cause it to become forbidden? You didn't purchase the right species. So if the, the bird that you're supposed to purchase it's Tzipora, which are chayos. It's not chayos, because they, they don't have the, vital, the vibrancy and the vitality of a fully living bird. That's the reason why, initially, the purchase doesn't affect the status of the bird. That's the birds. When you consecrate something, there's such a thing as Kedusha's dummy. Kedusha's dummy, it has, even though it may not be qualified to one of the Mizbeach, but its value has value because you could transfer the Kedusha onto another, onto another animal. So it has value. Here it's either it meets the grade or it doesn't meet the grade. If it doesn't meet the grade, then it, it has no relevance to anything. It's an ordinary bird. It's a bird that was killed. 
There, it is an act of consecration. The question is, to what degree was it consecrated? Was it consecrated, it's called Kedushas Haguf, that it's fit to go on the Mizbeach, or it's not fit to go on the Mizbeach, because it has the defect, but it has Kedusha, because it still has relevance to the Korban, because its value could be used for the Korban. You're putting it into God's domain. The, this has nothing with God's domain. Of course, that's be replaced. That's be replaced. They whatever they burn. It's uh, whatever. Okay, I just want to do toast. So, so Rashi himself learns. Mm -hmm. What's the case of Nitzis Trefo? So he says the Havmina was Kishe Bodak Bishimon Nitzis Shin Nitrefo Bishchitosa. Originally, the Gemara understood what does it mean Nitzis Trefo. That's at his, it became, what happens if you slaughter it with knife? There's a nick in the knife. And as a result of the nick, it gets caught on, on the esophagus, on the trachea of the bird. It's a trachea. So that means initially when the bird was purchased, it was what? It qualified. It was called Ziporachayo. It only became trachea because you tore it. It was torn as you were slaughtering. So if that's the case, the original purchase is a valid purchase, right? Because it's something which happened subsequently later. That was the Havamina. On that, the more answers, the way Rashi explains, it was Bibnei Meo. That, orig that uh, the, the defect, it's not as a result of the shechito, but rather at the time of the purchase, the defect already was there. So therefore, the original purchase did not affect the status of the bird. That was the havmin and the maskona. What? That's not possible. Rashi said, because it was, it's internal. It's not possible to know. Okay? Definitely, definitely. That, that's, you, you only know it's only because we, afterwards you opened the bird and you found that it was defective. So Rashi learns, what is B'nai Me'eho? Yeah. B'sha'as l'kichu lo ha'vichaz lo chol ha'iser. Okay, so Viatosis explains what exactly is the defect. Pirsh B'kuntris, it's the um, fifth Tosis on the page. D'kol sokadaitr shebodak b'simonim, nimtza shenitra b'shchito. When you check the, the simonim, that's the trachea or the esophagus of the bird, you found that it was, be, it was trefa in that location. The trachea was, was pierced. The nitrofa me koro. But if initially it already was punctured, was perforated, go nikiv krum shalmoach, o nechto ragleo, lo shach misti nimtseis. If it was something that it was, was obvious initially, you could, you could see it. It, it. It's not, it was found to be. If initially, therefore the Gemara understood to how did it happen, as a result of the Shechito, that's what caused it to become the Trefa. So when you purchased it initially, it was a quali the bird qualified. So therefore, we have to say it was in its intestines. But something that you couldn't detect before you, you killed the bird, that's what was found to be a trefa. Now, Tosa asks a question. We have a chazoka. If you have an animal that initially, rove animals, the majority of animals are born hell, not with any internal defect. You find a defect later. What's taloha? Right? The presumption happened later. Not with, not, it wasn't born with the defect. Because the majority of animals are what? Are not born defectively. So when it says you found the bird that it had a perforated uh, intestines, which causes it to be a traitor. So Tos has a problem with this. What it, so we have the same question. Rove says when it was purchased, what was the bird? They didn't have perforated intestines. Subsequently, something happened which caused it to be perforated. So he says, so, and, it, and it, it's nymph, it was found to be. So why is, the, why is this a, any better, a better answer? Than the Shechita, right? That, that's Tos's question. Not make so you the same question. When it was purchased, it, it qualified. It was qualified. It's not even the Mechach Tos. 
it, the bird never initially qualified. You need a, 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 a vibrant bird with full life. Maybe this bird, Rope says this bird that was that kind of bird. That happened later. It's not the way Rashi learned. The Havina was initially that it was internal. It's not the way it happened what, what, during the Shechita. So we find the intestines is perforated. So the Mar asks, but Rove says it may have happened later because the average bird doesn't have a perforated intestines. On that, the Gemara answers, Maybe it happened after you purchased it. What does that mean? It found a trefa regarding its, its internal organs. You open the bird, you find it has no liver. The bird doesn't have a liver. Let's say one of the, like on, the Gemara says, that a human being cannot live without a liver. Yeah? David, if you remember the Gemara a, a human being cannot live without a liver. An, a, tr uh, an, a cow, an animal can live without a liver. But it's still a trefer. It doesn't make a difference. It could live without a liver. S other, something else compensates for what the liver does, but actually it doesn't have a liver. It's a trefer. It's one of the thir 18 uh, reasons why, which render an animal trefer. So that's what it says. Nibs is trefer, go shinit la covid. The liver was not there. The bird did not have a liver. Or was another type of defect, which clearly has not the... It, it's clear it had to be before. before. That's, what we're talking about that? That's what we're speaking. That's what we're answer. So it's not a sophie. So the bird never qualified to be purchased to be a bird to be used for Mitzorah. Still Osir. It's still Osir. It's Osir. It's Osir. That's the, that's, that's the question. Then Rabbi Yochanan's question is a phenomenal question. Why is it, why is it Mutabad? No, oh, you already did the purchase. When you purchased it, it was, you purchased it for Tzibari Mitzora. The purchase causes the transition from permitted to forbidden status. So it already is forbidden. Right? Says, according to what I'm saying, it's the Shechita. So the Shechita was not a valid Shechita. Right? So it never, the transition takes place at the time of the Shechita. The Shechita wasn't valid, so the, but according to you, it's time of the purchase. So it already assumed the forbidden status. So why does it say it's permitted? Well, that he answers no, because it was indicated that even time of the purchase, the, the bird never qualified. It was a trade from the very beginning. Yeah. Okay, let's go further. Mayspeak. Shoch now, when the ritual of the, you, you have two birds, you slaughter one bird, and then you take the living bird, and what do you do? You have an Azov and Shni You have this, this grass, this hyssop grass, and you have a Shni you have a crimson material, and you dip it, you dip the living bird with them in the water, and you sprinkle it on the Mitzorah. This is the ritual how to reinstate him that he should be able to come back into the machne, into the camp. Okay? What happens if you slaughter the bird and you don't have the Ezum and the Shni Tolas? And you don't have the eights, eights errors. You need three things. Let's say you don't have them. You just have the bird. Is the bird affected with such a Shechita? Is it affected? Shochta shlo be'ezum, shlo be'eitz errors, shlo be'shni Tolas. Rabbi Yaakov and Meho v'huktel mitzvosa asura. Rabbi Yaakov says that since it was designated for the mitzvah, even though those items were lacking, it takes on a forbidden status. Reb Shimon Omer, Ho v'nishchetosh, lo k'mitzvosu b'teres. Since the shechita was not a proper shechita, although it wasn't a trefa, <coughs> but since all the other components of what the ritual is comprised of are lacking, the shechita doesn't affect the status of the bird. Shlo k'mitzvosu, it's with the bird, it's muteris. One second. Ad kandol pligi. What is the basis for the argument between Reb Yaakov and Reb Shimon? El marso v'shechita shein ruyo shmo shechita. One is of the opinion that even though the other components are not there, but actually the shechita in its own right was a valid shechita, even though it doesn't qualify to be used in the ritual, but the shechita is what? Is a shechita. It's a valid shechita. So shechita sheni ruya, it's still classed with a shechita. And what does the Torah say? Shechita is what causes it to, tra to, to transition from a permitted status to a forbidden status. 
That since in the context the way the shechita was done, the bird cannot be used in the ritual unless you have the other components, the other items. Therefore, the shechita does not affect the bird. But the kuli alma, but everybody's in agreement. They're only arguing, does the shechita affect it? Does the shechita not affect it? But the purchase definitely doesn't affect it. So we see here clearly, as Rabbi Yochanan is saying, it's not Mikhaim, it's not when you purchase it, it doesn't become forbidden, but rather it's when, it's when the Shechita takes place. That's when it becomes forbidden. That's Rabbi Yochanan's question to Rish Lokish. Because they're arguing. One says the Shechita is a valid Shechita, even though it cannot be used for what? Even, yeah. But as Shechita, it's called Shechita. Yeah. You slaughtered a Tzipor Chayo. The other one says, you may have slaughtered Tzipor Chayo, but it, it has... It's, it doesn't have the value unless it's done in its proper context. Therefore, the shechita does not affect it. Therefore, it remains permitted. But they both agree. When does the transition take place? At the time of the shechita, not time of the purchase. Okay? So this seems, this refutes Reish Lakish's position. So it's not lakicha, it's not time of purchase, it's time of the shechita. On that, tomorrow answers Tanoi. This argument to Rabbi Yochum Reish Lakish is about Chaluk's Tanoi. And, and, and Rish Lokish is going to, according to one opinion, Rish Lokish is the other opinion. The Tonda of Rabbi Shmuel, Nema Machshir Machapi Bifnim. We discussed this yesterday. You have Korbonus in the Azorah, in the sanctuary. So a Korbon, which is a Machshir. Machshir means it only qualifies the person to be reinstated. And Machapi, and then you have a, a Korbon, which is an atoning a Korbon. It's atonement. Oshom or other Korbonus. What was the machap of achutz? That was the egla rufa, because it says it says kapora, egla rufa outside of the base of nigdosh, it atones, atones for the community, and the machshir is what is the tzipor mitzora, right? That's the machshir. Ma machshir machaper omo b'fnim also be machshir ki machaper, av machshir machaper omo achutz also be machshir machaper. So what is that? That's what it's it's before it's slaughtered, right? It's before it's slaughtered. Right? It's like the, right? It's like the Egla Rufa. When that, does the Egla Rufa assume? It's when it's alive. It, it already assumes the forbidden status. So now it's interesting. We have a machlokas here. Shechita shein ruya shmo shechita elo shmo shechita. You know, this argument is an argument in uh, Ksubis and Babakama, even though it's the exact same terminology, but it means something else. It's like, you know, we have a Surah Mavsekas before Yom Kippur. We have a Surah Mavsekas before uh, Tishba. You know, but uh, is it the same thing? It's, it's, it's worlds apart. One is a feast, and the other one is literally, uh, it's, 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 it's a mourner's a meal, right? On the floor, the egg, the ash, the bread, and that's it, right? It's the same thing. What, what is it? The context is normally discussed, not here. The halach is, what's the halach if you go and slaughter an animal on Shabbos? Valid shechita. Are you permitted to eat the, eat the meat? You're not permitted. No, anybody. Nobody's permitted to eat the meat. Let's see, it was the Bemezid. Somebody goes and does a shechita on Shabbos. It's not where you slaughter it for, for, for a person who's deathly ill. You slaughter it for somebody who's deathly ill, other people could eat of that shechita. But if your person goes and violates the Shabbos and does an act of shechita on Shabbos, although the shechita was done perfectly, you're not permitted to benefit from it. You're not permitted to eat it. Ever, ever. There's no argument ever, whatever it is. Said to Jabana. The Gemara says it's Jabana. Of course, it says, it says, Shab, it says, uh, Shabbos Kodesh. It says, Shabbos is Kodesh, but Maser not Kodesh. Shabbos is, is holy, but the actions that you do on Shabbos is purely rabbinical. But rabbinically, you're not permitted to eat it. So there's a question. A person steals an animal, an ox or a sheep. So the Torah says, if you slaughter it, what do you pay? You have to pay penalty. Dal vei. So let's say the person, the thief went, slaughtered on Shabbos. Does he have to pay the Alvei? It says, it says, Utfochu Machoro. Either you slaughter it, you sell it. So this slaughtering, the Torah classified it as Shechit, as Tvocho. So the question is, he, he, say, he did slaughter it. It's a, in, in the context of slaughtering, it was done perfectly. But it's Shechit Hashem Ruya. But you're not permitted to eat from the Shechit. So there's an arg argument among the Tanoim, Rabbi Yudin Rabbi Shimon, is or not shmosh, or is it a shechita or not a shechita? 
If we, even though you can't, not able to eat it, it's classified as shechita, then you pay the penalty. Because Torah says if you slaughter it, although you can't eat it, Torah says that's, that's still classified as shechita. The other one says, review this, says no, shechita shenu is lo shemo shechita. Shechita means that only if you're able to eat from it. But if the shechita has no effect in regard to eating, the Torah says that's not called shechita. We don't value that as a shechita. Not it's a penalty. No, it's a penalty. I mean, the, the issue is rabbinical. Good, but factually, factually. So it's a whole discussion. There's a whole discussion, right? It's machlux. Rebuda and the Chachamim. Rebuda and Reb Shimon, the Gemara. Okay, good, 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 good. Correct. Okay, good. Good question. So there's a Tosis, okay? So Tosis speaks about this. And the commentators in the Ramam speak about this. Um, again, I'm going to give you something, and you're gonna, I hope you'll make a differentiation. The, the halacha is um, Mishicha. We rule if you take something, you pull it from its location. It's yours. No, no, on a t it's rabbinical. On, on a Torah level, it's not yours. There's no such thing as Kinyan Mishicha. You have to pay for it. Either you in bring it into your domain or you have to actually pay for it. Rabbinically, they said, even Shechit, it's yours. Right? What's the reason? Well, let's say they said, if you find some, you come upon something that's within your four cubits in an ownerless location. So, rabbinically, because it's in your domain, no one else is there at the time, that's the equivalent you acquire it. So what does that mean? You've acquired it. What's that called? It's King Jabana. On a Torah level, is, is this your domain? It's not your domain. The Chacham say that is your domain. If it's within your Dalar Amos, it's your domain. Now, is it yours on the Torah level or not? So the, there's a question. King Jabana Mahana Doraisa. The rabbinic instrument of acquisition is recognized by the Torah. Okay? So you see, even though it's only rabbinical, the Torah acknowledges that, that transfer into your domain. That's your acquisition. Yeah. So you say the same thing here. The Torah says, normally when you do shechit on Shabbos, you're permitted to eat from The Chachom says, you're not permitted to eat it. So if the Torah recognizes is n and values it as something which is inedible, halachically doesn't meet, so the Torah says, this is something which you're not permitted to eat. Because the Chachom says, you're not permitted to eat it. So if the Torah acknowledges that, what is it? That's a shechit shein ruya. I mean, you could you could differentiate because they were dealing with hefker bez and hefker. One would deal on a monetary level. The chachamim were empowered by the Torah to transfer assets. Here, the question is: a kosher or not kosher? The Torah says you do an act of shechita, you permit it to eat it. Chum said, don't eat it. So they're tying your hands. That's a prohibition. One is a transfer of assets. One is the question: what is it? If you affect it, as Torah says, you should affect it. It's been affected. So, so what? Rabbinically, you're not able to eat it, right? That, that's a differentiation. Because it's only rabbinical. It's, rabbinical. it's only rabbinical. Because the, that, that's the argument. It, we're, see, we're beyond where you're at. You were beyond where you're. At. If when the Torah says shechita, shechita means you have to be able to eat of it. That's the argument. When Torah says shechita, the shechita means it has to have an effect, or as long as you go through the action, although it has no effect, it's for the shechita. Okay, that that's the argument. Now, there's a question. But if the, even when you're not permitted to eat from it, it's only rabbinical. So on the Torah level, you're able to eat from it. So why is it called? Why isn't considered a shechita? That that's that's where we're at. That's what we're discussing now. So I wanted to show you, we find something similar regarding acquisition. That although it's only rabbinical, yet the Torah recognizes the value of the rabbinical acquisition. So I said it's not comparable to what we're discussing here. Because there, what is the, what is the basis of monetary acquisition? That's the principle of Tefka Beznefka. The Torah empowered the Chachomim that they're able to deem assets onerless or transfer assets. So that's a Torah concept. So they're acting, as the Torah says, they transfer the asset. 
So if the asset's been transferred, so, so it's someone else's asset. It's not your asset any longer. So the acquisition is recognized by the Torah. But over here we're dealing with, if the Torah says doing shechita uh, allows you to eat it, so factually in its essence, it's edible. The Chacham say, but we don't want you to eat it. But factually, if you eat it, are you eating something that's not ritually slaughtered? You're eating something that, 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 was, that shechita was done to. So how do we understand the, the position in regard to Dal of Shechita She'en Ruya? It's a Shechita Ruya. That's the question. Okay? That's something else. Yeah, that, that they, they revoked, that's the word. They, they revoked the King Kesef. I'm, let's, I'm, I'm, I'm focusing... Rabbinically. But, uh, no, but again, again, maybe yes, maybe not. Maybe yes, maybe no. Maybe yes, maybe no. Maybe yes, maybe no. See, that you're not going to find a Gemara. What, what I'm quoting now is explicit in the Gemara. It's a Bryson. Bryson Ksubis, a Bryson Bovakama. It's an argument of Shimon and Chachomim. Dalit Vey, if you slaughter on Shabbos, are you, are you liable for Dalit if you're not liable to pay penalty? Asking a, a phenomenal question. Something's kosher. And somebody says, if you eat it, I'll shoot you. Right? Does that make it unkosher? So the Chachom, they tie your hands. They say, you're not permitted to eat it. It's a fence. It's kosher. So the Shechita actually caused it to be considered kosher. So what if rabbinically it's not, it's, you're not permitted? That's the question. That's what we're coming to answer. So we once mentioned that there's a Tosa, or a Zer, which we had, that although the Gemara says, like, if Rosh Hashanah falls out on Shabbos, we don't belong Shabbos on Shabbos. So the Gemara says, so you see from there that the Chachomim were empowered to nullify a mitzvah if Torah says you, you're obligated to blow the shofar, they 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 empowered to revoke the mitzvah. It's a doraisa. So Mar says no, it's true, but only in a certain context. That's b'shev al tase. There you're violating it passively, but to to legislate you should overtly revoke a mitzvah that the chachamim don't do, or are not simply the Gemara says are not empowered to do. So if they tell you, eat not kosher, where the Torah says it's kosher, it's not kosher. That they're not empowered to do. Because there you're overtly violating the Torah. That they're not empowered to do. Wait, wait, wait. Because they're passively. Passively, they're not allowing you to do the mitzvah. Right? So there the violation is passive. It's the non-fulfillment. But to do something which is overtly transgressing, that they're not empowered to do. Okay? So Tosa says that's not the understanding of the Gemara. Even though that's what the Gemara says, the Gemara says they are empowered, but normally they don't. But if for, for whatever reason they feel that it's necessary, they, they're empowered on the Torah level even to revoke a mitzvah. So if they revoke it, what is it? That means, and this is Rabbi Neon at the beginning of um, Brochus. So the Mishnah says that you so say Kriya Shema, before Chatzos. What happens if you set it after midnight? So the Allah Mark tells over a story, Rabbi Lil's children had gone to a wedding, they came back and they shared with their father that hadn't yet said Kriyashma. So their father said, if dawn hasn't yet come, he's still able to say Kriyashma. So Mark says, why? Because the whole idea of saying before midnight is to create, to distance you from, of course at night a person is uh, susceptible to sleep, so we want you to do before midnight. Not to delay it. So Rabbi Yona says, you're only Yotze after midnight if mistakenly the time passed. But a person deliberately delays it till after midnight, even if you say the Kriya Shema, you're not Yotze. That's Rabbi Yona. That's Rabbi Yona. So Rabbi Yona says, so clearly, what do you mean I'm not Yotze? But I said the Kriya Shema. No, it's between me and, me and God, Kriya Shema. I said it. So evidently, see, Rabbi Yonah says, no, the Chachomim, they actually acted in the capacity that they actually, they revoked the mitzvah. They nullified the mitzvah. It has no value whatsoever. And there's a toast in the sukkah says the same thing, something similar regarding sukkah. So I'm saying, so over here, Chachomim, if you slaughter on Shabbos, they say it's considered not kosher. It's as if Shechita was not done, as if you're reading the Vela. 
So that's definitely, that, that, that's a shechita. You didn't, it's the cause of not slaughtering it. Therefore, if you didn't slaughter it, so there's no liability of knas, there's no penalty. You don't pay penalty. It's the veil. Same thing. No, 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 it's not. It's shechita. It's shechita. No, cause it's the same thing, same thing. Say it's the veil. So they, they revoked it that, that it's considered it's called the Nevelo. Like it's, it wasn't slaughtered. Okay? That's what we have. So that's the same. But it has no relevance to the discussion here. Here, Shechidosh and Ruya, meaning the Torah says you have to slaughter Tziporim Chayos. The Shechita that you did to this, you didn't meet the criteria. So here the Torah says when you take the bird and you slaughter it, you have to have three other components. Now, look, if you don't have those components, is it called shechita? It's called shechita in the context which you normally slaughter, but in this context, Torah says that's not called shechita. Although it's a valid shechita. Now, let's say that bird, you'd want to eat the bird. Right? Would you be permitted to eat the bird? Right? If it's not supporting the uh, uh, you're permitted to eat the bird. It's, it's a kosher bird. Not, no, but not, it's not a mitzvah. They, they're nullifying because the effect of the shechita has no effect. No, it's not a mitzvah. He slaughtered on Shabbos. Somebody else has. No, no, they, no. They compensated. No, that the, the person is not going to be penalized. Value. Restitution he has to pay. pay Restitution is something else. So the, the if he shoot the animal, the the, the, the damage, damage is, is fully compensated. Compensated. So what are we talking We're talking about penalty. The penalty. The four and three and four times its value. The additional payment. Also to the to the damage, but that's not restitution. We're penalizing the thief, the thief for slaughtering the animal rather than returning the animal. It's a penalty. The Bezdin cannot rule unless it's called Shechita. So if it can't be, then that's not called Shechita. Then he he's not out. He doesn't. That's, that's not. That's not. What about if he, he does, rather than Shechita, he does and he decapitates the animal. He shoots the animal. So it wasn't done. Right? He, the Shechita wasn't. He didn't meet the criteria the Torah speaks about. You only get the penalty if. So he didn't do what the Torah says to, to, to be liable for the penalty. So rabbinically, because they invalidate, they nullify the shechita, the court cannot impose the, the fine. The fine. Okay. The Gemara says if a person would go and let's say take the animal and let's say do an act of idolatry with the animal, he take it and then he slaughter it lavo Is he liable for for dalav hey? The Gemara says according to the thing is and we shmo shchita. So. What happens if he slaughters it for idolatry? Does he have to pay the old bay? Shmur says, no. For idolatry, it's, it's worse. Because the moment he starts slaughtering it, it's not called a shechita. The object itself becomes a forbidden object. It becomes, it's not called a... So the Mar says, what about if he slaughter it? And the last, the conclusion would be to conclude for Avodah Zorah. So the Mar says, then he would be. 
if you're of the opinion Shrita Shenibuya is Shmo Shrita. We will continue.